into the house of the Lord. We bring, we bring the sacrifice of faith into the house of the Lord. As we offer, as we offer unto thee the sacrifice. The sacrifice is of death given. As we offer unto thee. Give to the Lord. The sacrifice is of praise. What do you bring? Uh, I bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. What do you bring? As we offer, as we offer, but run to thee. Give it to the Lord. The sacrifice is of death given. As we offer, run to thee. The sacrifice is of praise. I bring the sacrifice of praise into the house. Of the Lord, me I bring go, I bring the sacrifice of prayer into the house of the Lord. As I offer, as I offer unto thee the sacrifice, celebrate the Lord. The sacrifice is of me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege to bring offering to your house. Fake all the glory. Thank you for counting us among living souls. We give you all the honor. We ask, Father, that you accept our offerings. Bless us in returns. And Lord, I ask, let us be glad that we gave you offering. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. Put your hands together for the Lord and be seated. As we receive this morning, the choir, are you ready? The ministry of the gospel voices. Let's receive them. Let's receive them in this first service. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We serve a dependable God. No one meets him and remains the same. Everybody is lifted in encounter with him. And that is why we are here to praise him. With a song titled, Dependable God. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Reliable, 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 reliable
unto more reliable Jesus. Sufficiency of the saints, shepherd of my soul, self existing, all sufficient. Jesus, you are in all. Sufficiency of the saints, shepherd of my soul. Self-existing, all sufficient. Jesus, you are in all. Jesus, you are in all. You are more than enough. Self-existing, all sufficient. Jesus, you are in all. I can call on you. I can bait on you any time or any day. Oh, Jesus, you are in all. Jesus, you are in all. You are more than enough. Self existing, all sufficient. Jesus, you are enough. Yeah. No one meets you and remains the same. Everybody is lifted in encounter with you. Oh, you are dependable, Jesus. So give the change to more. Yeah, you are dependable, dependable God. Dependable God. So give the change to more. Yeah, you are dependable, dependable God. Dependable God. So give the change to more. You are here. Yeah. I can get to you, you never fail. Oh. What to say? It will come to pass. You are not the man that you should love. Yeah, you are dependable, dependable God. Dependable God. So give me time to go. And remains the same. Everybody is lifted in encounter with you. Oh, you are dependable, Jesus. So give the change to more dependable, Jesus. Let's put our hands together to the Lord. The Lord God Almighty is dependable. He is reliable. He is the only one that will not fail when he makes a promise. Hallelujah. Please welcome somebody both to your right and to your left this morning. October 1st, 63 years ago, on a day like this, Nigeria celebrated independence. Hallelujah. And today, in the name of Jesus, I pray on every aspect of our lives. May we, may we enjoy freedom in the name of Jesus. Uh, you know our law here, this is our principle. When you come to God's presence and the word is about to be shared, you put your phone either in your bag or put it somewhere. You can't hear God and hear man at the same time. You can't do two things, thank you. You can't do two things at the same time. Just listen. The Bible says, uh, Joseph remained in prison until his word came. Now, it was a word that came for him that brought him out of prison and to limelight. Your own word will come this morning in the name of Jesus. Like you know that every first Sunday like this, we used to have leadership meeting service. Uh, the first service is always based on sharpening our leadership skill. 
And last month, we took the part one of the message, Learn from Samson. Last month, we were able to study on how Samson was brought down by Delilah. And I told us last month that as uh, believers, we must learn to identify our Delilah. Your Delilah may not be a woman like that of Samson. Your Delilah is anything you love, you love so much, in fact, that has control in your life, but is actually destroying you. And I told us last month that your Delilah might, might even be sugar. You love sugar so much, it's, it's destroying you, but it's like you don't want to stop. To some, your Delilah may be sleep. You love sleep so much, and you have always been going late for any meeting that you, you, you want to attend. Because, not because you, uh, you don't want to go there early, but you just seem to just sleep off so easily. Now, some of you, your own Delilah, if I discovered during the week, that some people's Delilah is their phone. I'm telling you, I discovered it. You know, I was somewhere and somebody was at work and she was supposed to be working. She didn't know when her boss came in and took the phone in her hand from her hand. Her boss came into her office. She didn't know. She left all she was doing. She was busy on her phone. And her phone took the phone. The boss took the phone and told her, you might eventually lose your job because of this. So your Delilah is anything you love so well but it's actually destroying you. You have given it chance to this. And I told us last week uh, last month, sorry, that nothing can destroy you without your permission. You know, I told you last, last month to so study and find out your Delilah because some of you are already abusing something. Something is a stupid guy. You know, something is not a reasonable guy. How can somebody tell you tell me the secret of your power? And he told her the secret of his power. And all of a sudden, the so Philistine showed up the first time. And he, the second time. And he thought, something is not wise. That's what so many people are saying. But so many of you, your Delilah is bringing you down too. Like that of Samson. I pray in Jesus' name that you, uh, you receive grace to conquer that Delilah in front of you in Jesus' name. I told us last month, I said to conquer your Delilah. We are going to continue from it today. You, are, you need strong self-discipline. You need to tell yourself certain truths. You know, I don't need this now. I don't, if I continue with this, this is where I'm going to end my life and things like this. So today, let's look at part two. Learn from something. And our anchor scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Can we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12? 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Now, those of you at the media, I want you to be very swift. Thank you this morning. Yes, we, we always stand up to read the first Bible passage. Can we all be on our feet? Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. The Lord, we honor you too. We always do this in order to honor God's word as the first passage to be read. One, two, and let's go. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, least a fall. Let's take it again. I didn't hear you. Let's make it louder. One, two, and let's go. The wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, least he fall. Be seated in his presence. Let him that thinks he stand. Now, which means, do not be too confident in yourself that you, can, you cannot fall. Don't be too confident to the point that you now become careless. I come again. Don't be too confident to the point that you now become careless with your life. Don't be that confident. You know, some of us are so confident that we don't at times dot our I's and cross our T's. Some of us are so confident that we don't try to go back to check within the lines. Let me check what I have done. You know, there was one of us like that too. You know, when uh, she was in, I think she was, uh, she was in either primary two or three that time, one of my uh, children. We employed the help of this lesson teacher. And the teacher told us, he said, Pastor, he called me and the mom. He said, Pastor, mommy, I want to see you. I said, what is it? He said, please, buy me. We call it in Nigeria because of those watching online. Pankere. Now, in, uh, in, generally, we call it cane. You know, he said, buy me cane. So, I said, why? He said, sir, I want to beat something out of your daughter. And I want to beg you, sir. When I start beating her, you must not show up. You must not say anything. And we agreed. In fact, that day I discovered that Yoruba proverb. Bami no mami. Ko shekini. Ko denu olo ma. Ko le denu e lai lai. You know. So as the teaching was on, they started their, their class. All of a sudden I had my daughter crying seriously. 
He was beating her like she stole something. And I'll tell the mom. The mom said, don't worry. Let's leave him. Let's trust this teacher. He was beating her like she stole. In, in fact, the beating was so much, she was crying to the point that our neighbors downstairs had to come upstairs. What is happening? Did she steal anything? The teacher said no. But you know, they were shocked that the man, the, our neighbors now asked, are her parents not at home? He said, they are there in the sitting room. So they came to us and said, Pastor, uh, uh, mommy and me, kilo shele. You know, we didn't say anything. And they left quietly because they were surprised that why will the parents be there and we will come from downstairs upstairs? You know, at the time he finished, he was satisfied with beating her. That was what corrected the sense of my daughter. I now asked the teacher, why did you do that? He said, Pastor, you know what? She is so confident that when she looks at a mat, she will look at it. This one is simple. Now, this one is simple. She will not count carefully that he discovered that all her mistakes are just out of minor one. Thank you. She will get the formula. She will work it well. But a minor mistake will make her miss, miss the answer. And he needed Cain to correct it. Do you know that that was exactly what brought the correction? So that scripture that is saying, let him that thinks he stand. You know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's this kind of confidence. Is that he should make me jaw. The devil cannot get me. That a lot of Christians put up. <laughs> hey, beloved, the enemy that we are we that is attacking us is an enemy that studies us in order to want to attack. But I pray in the name of Jesus, as we learn wisdom from Samson today, the Lord will give us victory over the wicked in Jesus' name. There used to be a man of God too in America. The man will come and preach, and he will tell them in church, Devil, you can't get me. Hear me. I want to tell all you ladies in this church that I'm too anointed to be trapped by any of you. I am too anointed to be, you know, to, to fall into your hands. The devil is a liar. Let the devil become a girl and come by himself. He cannot get me. So, life continued like that. He got engaged. You know, did courtship. After courtship, got married. On his wedding day, as they were dancing out of the church, they got to the entrance of the, they joined them. They got out at the entrance of the church for photograph. The lady just said to her, his new wife said to her, I mean to him, hello, man of God, I finally got you. Ah, he said, got me as how? I, you, you have been bragging that we cannot get you. I was sent by the devil for you and I finally got you. As I'm talking to you now, that man of God died of heart attack. Because the lady so much frustrated him in marriage. The marriage got broken within two years. He, didn't he couldn't remarry. And he was living on in pain until he finally lost his life. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you not fall into satanic trap in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's look at how the devil got something. This is part two. We take part three next month. Now in the part two, let's start by looking at who was something. Who was Samson? In Judges chapter 13. Let's go there. We are taking a study this morning. Judges chapter 13. From verse 3 to verse 7. Who was Samson? Let's answer that question. I want you to be very swift at the media. We don't have all the time. Who was Samson? Now look at this. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman. And said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and beareth not. But thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Move on. We stop at verse 7. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. Verse 5. Verse 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be what? A Nazarite unto the Lord from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Stop here for now. Who was Samson? Samson was a Nazarite chosen by God to deliver Israel. So if anybody asks you, who was Samson? Samson was a Nazarite. I'm going somewhere. Because if you don't know who Samson was, you will know the laws that guided his life. Samson was a Nazarite from birth. Now let's go to the next question. What are the laws of a Nazarite? 
Now, you know, Nazarites are people that are separated unto God. So, he was separated unto God to become Israel's deliverer. Now, let's understand the laws of the Nazarites. Let's go to Numbers. Numbers chapter 6, from verse 1 to verse 12. Let's look at the laws that guides the life of a Nazarite. And the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, Move on, we have 12 verses to read. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When either a man or a woman shall separate themselves to a vow, a vow of what? A Nazarite. To separate themselves unto the Lord. What are the laws that will guide their life? Three. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink and shall not drink and shall drink no ven uh, uh, vinegar or of wine. Uh, sorry. Uh, vinegar of, of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink the liquor of, of grapes nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separations shall he eat nothing that is made out of vine tree. From the kernel even to the husk. Please follow this reading. Next verse. And all the days of the vow of his of his sorry, all the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the day he 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 be fulfilled. In that which he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall be holy and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. Verse 6. And sorry, all the days that he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead. He shall come at what? No dead body. Verse 7. Let's move on. Let's move on. He shall make himself unclean for his father. or his. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or mother, for his brother or for his sisters when they die. Because the consecration of his God is upon his head. Verse 8. Verse 8. All the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. And if any man dies very suddenly by him, and he had defied the head of the consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his, own, of, of, of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. Now wait for me here. Let's look at the five laws. There are five laws I saw that a Nazarite should follow. You know why I'm showing you all these things? I'm showing you so that you will have understanding of how the devil got something. So that you will not fall by that process too. Now look at the five laws of the Nazarite. Number one, they are to separate themselves from uh, for, for the Lord. They are to separate themselves for the Lord. Now when you and I gave our life to Christ, what did we do? We made up in our mind. We entered the covenant that we will serve God. So every born again Christian is a Nazarite. Look up somebody. Now we made up our mind. Now that's the first law of Nazareth. Separation unto God. A Nazarite is separated unto God. He is chosen to live for God in holiness. He is to abstain from sin and pursue the purpose of God. Holiness and devotion to God is the first law of Nazareth. Now we saw it in scriptures. Then number two. He shall not allow any form of intoxication. We are looking at Samson. You know, he shall not allow any form, which means he cannot take any alcoholic drink. You know why? The reason is because God wants him to be in control of his senses. A, a Nazarite is supposed to be in control of his senses. So he doesn't take any strong drink. He does not take any uh, fumigated drink. You know, that's why uh, that's the, I call it the law of intoxication. He must not follow any form of intoxication. Number three, he shall be disciplined when it comes to food he cannot just eat anything because everybody does so now that's the third law of the Nazareth. that's why god said to him you cannot eat from the grapes you cannot eat from the vine you cannot eat from the kidney you know we saw it in scriptures the third law of the Nazareth is that nazarites don't just eat what everybody's eating he shall be disciplined when it comes to food number four they are never to cut their hair i will tell you the meaning of all these things they are never to cut their hair this represents good character you know that when people see them and see their longer they say ah this is a nazarite oh. this is a nazarite oh. that was what samson was and the fifth one they are to separate themselves from the dead whenever they see any dead thing they go far so they don't go close to the dead now these are the laws now don't forget where we started the bible says and the angel said unto the mother of samson you shall have a son he shall be a nazarite from his bat or did you not read it together a Nazarite from his birth and a deliverer of Israel. 
Now listen, and the devil wants to get this guy. The devil wants to bring him down. As the devil wants to get you, the devil wants to get me. He wants to bring us down. The devil will be looking for means. How do I get them? How do I get them? Let's look at how he began in the life of Samson. Number one, hear me. The devil did not start with a killer strike. Pay attention to this. If the devil is going to attack a Christian, he will not start from killing the Christian. He will start by separating the Christian from God. Now, how did the devil come? He didn't strike by saying, okay, oh yeah, palace, I say. No, if you see a, a backslider or a, a, uh, uh, the devil killed somebody today, the devil have started killing him long before. Hello? Now, how did the devil start with something? We see that in the Bible. In Judges chapter 14 and verse 1. I want all these scriptures to be coming on screen. In Judges chapter 14, verse 1. How did the devil start? Now look at how he started. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Verse 2. He saw and he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore, do what? Get her for me to wife. Now, how did the devil start his attack? He started with He's by introducing something to wrong relationship. Pay attention. A Nazarite was not supposed to marry a non-Jew. Now, if the devil is going to get a Christian from, you know, to make him fall, the first thing, he will trap him into wrong association. Who are your friends? Now, the people that surround you, do they believe in the God that you believe in? Do they believe in the principles of the God that you serve? The principles you yourself, you, you, you discovered by encounter. It's just like now, let somebody come up and be telling me that, Pastor, tithing is not, is not biblical. I got the issue of tithing by encounter. Nobody taught me how to tithe. I remember as a young Christian, over 20 something years ago, that time I was reading my Bible. And I saw that the Bible says, and Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek. And I said to myself, Abraham is one of the only Petrarch, that's the uh, uh, faith hero of the Old Testament that the Bible so much celebrates in the New Testament. Is it not your own Bible like that? The Bible even talks about his faith. The Bible even talks about Abraham's blessings. And I said, if Abraham is rated as a, as a friend of God and he was a tither, that was how I caught it. Now, can you now imagine for an unbeliever or a, even a, a new day Christian to now come over and say, Titan is wrong. Not one pastor taught me. I got it by encounter. Hello, am I communicating? Wrong association. That's the first step. Samson saw this young lady and said to his father, I am going to marry her. You know what the devil was doing? The devil was dragging him gradually. That's why I said the devil doesn't start with a killer strike. You know how it starts? It starts with a strike to weaken you as the Christian first. So many Christians have been weakened. So many leaders have been weakened. They no longer pray like before. They no longer saw the scriptures like before. They no longer attend church service like before. They are no longer devoted to the things they were devoted about God like before. Why? Wrong association. That's why I'm asking you, who is your friend? He started with weakening strike. He started with a wrong association. People of opposite faith. That was how he started. People of opposite faith. How can Almighty Samson date if he listen? And I know, you know, so many Christians so I said, Kumata now. Muslim, Christian, Komata now. I'm a church. Komata now. You know, so many Christians are thinking that way. But covenant people understand. Go read your scriptures. You will see that the Bible says, and a Levite woman married a Levite man. And they gave birth to Samson, Miriam, and Aaron. Who are your friends? And like I always tell people, in relationship, it's either that person influences you or you are influencing the person. No relationship leaves you at the same level. Psalm 
Samson went down to Timnath, saw a girl and fell in love with her. Beloved, there is no law, sorry, there is, there is no how a non-believer will understand the sacrifices we make as believers. If you are born again genuinely, a non-believer cannot understand you. I was talking to one unbeliever. I was preaching to him. And you know what I was preaching? I can't hear your keyboard playing. I was preaching to him. And as I was talking, to, I was talking to him about being faithful to his wife. You know what he said to me? He said, Pastor. I said, Sir. He's an elderly person. Pastor. He said, Sir. He said, Do you only eat rice? I said, I don't understand. Don't you eat a bite? I said, I eat a Don't you eat beans? I said, I eat beans. Don't you take pap? I said, I take pap. Once in a while, don't you take custard? I said, I love custard. He said, how will you now say I should be faithful to one woman when God created plenty of women? I, I, I said, is that the reason we are asking? Do I eat rice? Do I eat beans? I now took him to Matthew chapter 19, that he, when he created them, he created them male and female. Therefore, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, not wives. But everything I said, sir, he didn't understand. He's an unbeliever. How will almighty Samson, you know, the devil was coming and you know, when he dated that girl, did anything go wrong with him? Nothing. Because the devil did not start with a killer strike. Because the devil did not start with a Thank you. Let's go on. No matter how you try to explain, the, the unbeliever cannot understand your relationship with God. They can't, they can't just understand it. No matter how you try to explain. How do you want to explain that God speaks to you when you study the uh, my, one of my dickens was sharing? He works in a company. He said his boss doesn't believe that God exists. Now, he said, he was trying to talk to the boss about the Bible. He said, the boss asked him, who wrote the Bible? He said, he tried to say, the book. he said, did God write it? He said, some men sat down, combined stories for you people, and you people believe it. God does not exist. Get out of my office. They can't understand. That's why a non-believer cannot be your bosom friend. Not to now talk about you deciding to say, I will marry an unbeliever. That was the first point that the devil used to trick Samson. I'm asking you again, who is your friend? You know, when an unbeliever is your friend and you are rushing, you are rushing to church, ah, I'm, I'm a worker, I'm a worker, I'm a dicky, I'm a dicky, I'm in the usher, I'm in the usher, I'm in the choir, I'm in the choir, I'm in this, I'm in this, I'm in this, and you are ask you, kilo, little, you talk about opening prayers, you talk about preaching. I don't know whether you have noticed things like this. Ah, once you back with something to babu mission, we not shaking it. We bank now. To back with your fake gunluba. Imagine, and you that you to have that zeal for God before the thing begins to drop. That's the danger. I wrote here in my note: watch your association, guide your covenant principles jealously. Samson was weakened when he chose to date the Philistine girl from Timnath. Nothing happened physically, but something happened to him spiritually. Now I come again, watch your association. I say again, guide your covenant principles jealously. 
And I say again, Samson was weakened when he chose to date the Philistine from Timnat. If I ask some of you, when have you done your morning devotion last? Hello, me or not, Timo? Morning devotion care. That's how to, you know, that's how good Christians start up their day. You spend time in God's presence to pray. You study the Bible. You hear him for instructions and you go out confidently. Watch your association. Talore. Now, can you imagine if Father Abraham had unbelieving friends, he would have married an, another wife before Sarah would think of giving back to Isaac. Because it is we that are children of God that understand what God is saying. So, how did the devil start? He started with a weakening strike, not with a killer strike. And what was the weakening strike? He lured him into relationship with that Philistine girl. Number two, the devil struck again. When Samson took and ate the honey from the dead body of the lion. Now, can you remember that a Nazarite don't touch dead things? No, you have forgotten. Ah, are you sure you are here? Now, let's go to Judges chapter 14. Look at verse 8 and verse 9. Judges chapter 14, verse 8 and verse 9. Judges chapter 14, verse 8 and verse 9. And after a time, he returned to take her. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. Verse 9. And he took therefore in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother and gave them and they ate. But he told them that, sorry, he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. Can you see? He knew that, ah, daddy and mommy must not hear that I touched the dead body of a lion. Not, not to talk about taking honey from it. So, the Bible says he didn't tell his father and mother. Now, the question should be, why was it that uh, honey was bees perched on the dead body of the lion and released their honey there? It was a trap. Now, it was a trap to make something broke the second law. You know, he broke the first law, nothing happened. Association with the, the Philistine, nothing happened to him. He still has strength. He could still do all the, all the acrobatics. Then he came to the second one again. It was not a killer strike. It was a weakening strike. He shouldn't fadir there. He took honey. Now what does that show us? Hear me. The devil set the trap to know Samson's level of self-discipline. Samson fell cheaply. And it showed the devil how to get him. Look up. I want to tell you something here. Everyone hearing me, you are leaders, that's why I'm talking to you this way. Now hear me very well. Every single time you fall into temptation, you know what you do? You are showing the devil how to get you. The devil was studying something. Let's see. Bees, go there. Release some honey. Now, he knew that something was hungry. And as something was passing, he saw it. The devil wanted to test. Can, can I get this man in the aspect of weakness of not having self-control he tested him and he saw that something didn't even waste time he just went there scooped the honey started eating even went to his daddy and mommy and gave them the devil discovered that listen i can get this man this man does not have self-discipline if his needs clash with god's instruction he will bow to his needs beloved when your needs clash with god's instruction for your life which one do you follow I was listening to a man of God yesterday. This man of God said he was about going for a program. And a call came in. They kidnapped his daughter. His daughter was kidnapped. And he had a program to go and preach. And the wife said, Only what do we do? We have not seen her. We have not heard from the kidnappers. But we know that they have kidnapped her. They've called us that they have, she has been kidnapped. We don't know the, the, the location. We don't know their ransom. What do we do? You know what he said? He said, I told my wife. We must do the work of God. Yes, I love my daughter, but let's do the work of God. That's where some people will drop. Ah, Omola Mape. 
o sume so ni mo ma fi ru mo ma dura ti mo gba ko ma to de ah oluwa wa ni suru ni o that's what some people will say the, the, the pastor said when he went to the to do the ministration he got to the place of the program he saw crowd he said he preached like he did not even have an issue he didn't remember when he saw the crowd he ministered powerfully then when he came down he remembered that there was an issue again something fell every time you refuse to control yourself you fall into temptation and I want every leader to hear me today. The moment you got born again in, this, in the salvation package, self-control is part of it. You have the ability to say no to the things that are not right. But when, when something fell, he showed the devil how to get him. Now, and what did he show the devil? He showed the devil that set a trap in the place of his need and he will fall cheaply it was another move to weaken something he lost his ability to control his appetite for food and the devil marked it that this guy cannot control his appetite every leader that is here i refer to you as, as something your own something will not fall i didn't hear your amen i say your own something will not fall but you must learn to manifest what self-discipline let's go to the third one the devil set something up again. And this time, the devil set him up in the aspect of prayer. Now, okay, let's see. If something is under pressure from those he loves, how will he react? John, Judges chapter 14, verse 17. Judges chapter 14, verse 17. Listen, the devil was going somewhere. I want to show you something. Judges 14, 17. And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted and it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him and she told she told the redo to the children of the people now look up what happened here samson told them a parable on the day of his wedding with that lady and he said if you can get the parable i will give you this if you don't get the parable me i will take this the people now went to the lady and mount pressure on her Mom, pressure on your boyfriend, something, to tell you the, the meaning of the parable. Or else we are going to kill you and your father's house. You know what the devil was doing? The devil was trying to look at, he wants to, he wants to destroy, I mean, to discover more of Samson's weakness. The lady now pressurized Samson. Started crying. If you say you love me, if you say you love me, if you say you love me, something, I don't show you, I'm not sure you love me. Uh, you told my people the parable, you have not told me the meaning. You don't surely love me. Something, you don't love me. And something said, ah, oh, woman, I'm not supposed to tell you now. Okay, but this is the meaning of the parable. You know what the devil discovered again? The devil said, I've gotten him. I got him, number one, he cannot control his appetite. Number two, he cannot keep a secret from the one he loves. He wants Samson to see the one he loves. He will say everything that is in his mind. And don't forget, there was one golden secret that nobody knew about Samson. What's that? The power of Samson was on his head. If those locks are cut off, that's why, can I tell you the truth? Look up, everybody. The devil does not know how to get you. Did you hear me? He will get the information of how to get you from you. That's why you must be careful. And how will he get it? Every single time you fall to any temptation, what are you saying? You are showing the devil how to get you. He will now go and cook up something bigger at the bigger stage. The devil didn't stop there. Let's look at two more. The devil didn't stop there. Shagad Abbasede. I wrote here, at this point, the devil had gotten all the information required in order to get Samson pinned down. What did he discover? A. Samson was not disciplined when it comes to relationship. Now look up. I'm showing you what the devil discovered. Samson was not disciplined when it comes to relationship. Every child of God hearing me, if you want to make it in life, you want to fulfill the purpose of God in life, you must be disciplined when it comes to relationship. Everybody cannot be your bosom friend yes all of them want to friend you but you have the right to choose who should be your friends am i communicating 
that's the first mistake Samson made that the devil took it. Ah, this guy does not have discipline when it comes to choosing friends. Anybody can just be his friend. Anybody can just be his friend. Anybody can invite Samson anywhere. Cameraman is not with me. Anybody can invite Samson anywhere and Samson will go. Anybody can just say, Samson, can I be your friend? And Samson will, oh, can I have your number? I will, Samson will give number. A child of God that wants to fulfill God's purpose must be very cautious when it comes to the aspect of what? Relationship. But Samson failed and it opened the, the, the door. That's why when he saw Delilah that eventually destroyed him, it was not difficult because the devil had already known that Samson doesn't have discipline when it comes to choosing friends. I have a principle. Hear me. If you are a married man, you are not faithful to your wife, you cannot be my friend. That's me. That's my principle. If you are a man and you are the type that watch home video in the morning, you play game in the afternoon, you cannot be my friend because I'm a hard-working fellow. You have the right to choose who should be your friend. And if you are the type of a person you don't have your integrity to protect, you cannot be my friend though. You are walking around, we are walking together. People are saying, I say, oh lady, oh ni roni, and my mother low, uh, but I could that oh relationship with my party. Everybody should not be your friend. Because the Bible says for evil communication does what it corrupts good manners. Something missed it at that point. Look at the second thing the devil discovered. Number two. Samson was not disciplined when it comes to food. The devil discovered that one too. He eats anywhere, eats anyhow. Can you imagine he will just eat from the dead body of a, cat, of a lion? You want to go far. You want the purpose of God to be fulfilled in your life. You don't have discipline when it comes to food. Ekaroma, say ah, chiku say ah, anche ilikeni mutoa ah, mo 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 ila dubo i ah, mi uli i li ah, mo mo i oju i ah, kusenti o mo i sa anche sara mo mi wani awani kagunja ba fui and you say ah, sara ah, hulu alu da wa dry egele egele sanctified you can die under a sanctified food. So many people have lost their anointing because of what? Food. Something was not disciplined. That's why if you will go far, discipline yourself when it comes to the aspect of food. No matter how it looks. One of us was sharing with me. He was sharing a testimony. And he said, sir, when I got to those people's office, they offered, they asked me, what, what can I, what can we offer you? He said, he looked at the person they came with. The person said, water. He said, water too. But he was hungry. Some of you can eat anywhere. He said, and while they were discussing with him, he looked at the person he came with. The person did not open his bottle of water that they gave him. He too didn't open his own. The person left it. He left it. And eventually he said, well, congratulations. It's like we're going to give you the job. So of you, they dare not ask you, what can we offer you? Rice, chicken, put plantain, small beans. Can I get coleslaw? In fact, the day I noticed that this thing was important, we went to visit a senator's wife. Touch her for me. Right. We went to visit the senator's wife. I and one servant of God. As we entered very big factory, we entered their factory. She came out to come and meet us. Oh, and she was saying, oh, servants of God, you came to visit me. Oh, thank you. You know what the, my pastor friend did? Went on the knees. Oh, but sorry, Kule. Ah, auntie Derule Wasita. They've told our, our, our baggages out. We don't even have money to pay rent. In fact, they gave us till this money to leave. The senator's wife said, how much is the rent? She mentioned it. Instantly, it was not the days of transfer. She opened her bag, counted the money and gave her. And looked at me and said, young man of God, as young as you are, you are serving God. 
I said, yes, yes, ma. Ah, I just love you. Said, Thank you, ma. Did I not have need? I had need too. In fact, my need was more than their, our own. But I buried it. I buried it so that we can start a relationship. She, she allowed her need to block her relationship. Few years after, hear me, that senator's wife had been a great blessing, a tremendous blessing to my life, to my family and ministry. Then we're talking one day, he said, do you know that your friend that brought you closed the door of relating with me with the thing that she did? Some, of you, some, some, Christ, some leaders, I don't know, there's so much love food. You fight for food in parties. Stop it. Don't let people be looking at you as beggars. They will rate you as beggars and put you at a, at a corner. I, am I communicating? You go to parties, you are coming back with line on. They didn't distribute take away, but you look for one. You are Samson. And you came home, you are, you are not related to those that did party you are sharing meat. I work by Rotimo, and I work by rice, and I work by cake. Eh, the Silla and Winnie of Wurala. Something, yeah. What you more about Mutin to a syllabi, Mutin to a syllabi, Mashimo. Let them even be calling you, Mommy Lagbaja, Shetty Bunje. I'm not worried. Be so much disciplined to that point. Am I worried? Just like this morning when I was coming, you know, something was just aggravating my spirit. I was getting angry in my spirit. How people behave around people that just came from abroad. I, I hate it. In total, abroad, heaven called it. I one four thousand for you, you may man, my mark four thousand. Oh, yeah, yeah, nine hundred lamache, eight hundred lamache, a big pine. No, this morning I was just coming, and the thing was just crossing my mind. How do people behave around people that came from abroad? Is just a geographical location. Who you are to send to Lede to Padasibada? I feel like initially to repair. I want to raise leaders. Leaders that have their integrity. Some of you, they think the expenses you are carrying in Nigeria, they can't carry it over there. Exchange rates, Lodia Kayato. Respect yourself. Are you learning? Number three. Samson was not disciplined when it comes to information. When it comes to retaining information. Ah! Samson was not disciplined. Ever, ever, ever. Okay, but eh, well, I'm a week in bed. Hey, they got to invest something. She's so money, but she waiting. When invest, she waiting. Eh, eh, to chukun la America next week. Eh, ma something yon. Ah, okay, must have Mrs. Christopher no. But that was the the third problem of something. The girl cried and he said, "Okay, the meaning of the parable is this. The same thing was what brought him down when Delilah also cried." Because it was discovered that by, your, by their crying, they would get something to be emotional. He will speak. Sir, ma, who ma she she care rally? Who she she care call? Can you come and make a phone call? Can you come dedication? Come and eh? You just will lose it. No me wa. You go, you go there rally. That you just come and say, I just want to invite the church for our housewarming. Some of you, you have aborted so many good plan of God for your life with this thing.
Because you don't know who likes you. You only know those you like. Samson didn't know that her, her team, that girlfriend, would go and tell the people. Samson just came that day and said, yes, I have my parable with me. And the answer, they said, we will tell you the meaning of your parable now. He was shocked. They told him the meaning of his parable. Samson looked at the girl. And do you know that, that that was what broke their relationship? And he didn't learn from it because he had allowed it to become a weakness. Oh God, we don't have all the time. Number four, Samson, and I think devil discovered, Samson was not disciplined when it comes to sex. You know, the devil was watching him. Go to the scriptures, she will see that the Bible said there was a day he was coming back from one of the town. He went into the house of his harlot, slept overnight, and came out. These people were watching him. And beloved, if you bring all these things together, this was what Delilah capitalized on. What do you think made Samson to sleep after he answered the question of Delilah every time? It could be food and sex. Tell me the secret of your power. Samson said, tie me with rope, fresh rope. If tie me with fresh rope, I'll be as weak as a man. What made Samson to sleep instantly? Delilah would touch his head. Maybe bring some food to eat. Oh yeah, come and lie with me. Samson will sleep off. Samson, Samson, Philistines are here. He will jump up again and cut off the rope. Ah, uh, the lawyer said, you didn't tell me the truth. You didn't tell me the truth. He said, tie me with dry rope. Must he sleep again if it is natural? If it is ordinary? He won't sleep again now. But she came again as usual. Put small coughlin inside his food. Touch his neck, rub his head. After sex, Samson will sleep again. Until he now came up to say, You know, I've been in Nazareth from my youth, from birth. Look at this, my hair. They are not ordinary. That's where my power is. If you cut it off, I'll be as an ordinary man. Go read that scripture. The Bible says, And Samson and Delilah knew. That Samson has told her the truth. And he sent for the Philistine lords. She didn't stand for the Philistine lords before. He sent for them. He has told me. Come on and cut. What, what kind of sleep did he sleep? That they, the Bible says they shaved, not cut. They shaved his head. Could they see clipper? To my fast. Bleeding on low. Could they see? Unjainondi. Listen, I want you to be leaders, be mature, be disciplined. Even if you don't have food at all, at least have a little pride. They got something. They got something. When he woke up, he said, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? They slapped him. He couldn't do anything. Power was gone. Ah. I know something would do like this. My hair. Gone. Then they remove his two eyes. I want to summarize with this statement. Self-discipline is the greatest virtue needed for success in the journey of purpose. Where are those that hypes my words? Where are they? Take note of this. Self-discipline is the greatest virtue needed for success in the journey of purpose. In the journey of purpose, the greatest virtue needed is what? Self-discipline. Ability to tell yourself it's enough. No. Do I like it? I won't continue. Ask me now. I've been to so many important people's houses. Pastor, please, will, please come. And they will set the table. And God will say, son, you know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, when you go to a rich man's house, put a knife on your throat. 
sir, which one do you serve? Do we serve you? We have snail, we have um, chicken, we have meat, we have this, we have that. Sir, you are going. Can we can we pack it? One test here, new. And you two say, hey, they take a win, la. <laughs> and you know those people, they are very fun, man. Check out to buy it, you know. Eddie, a gang called Eddie, no. Mama, you know, ah, oh, okay, Eddie, Eddie. There's a way I used to tell if my wife sit down beside me during service and I have a guest that is fumbling, I used to tell her, oh, she is in that very end. I shall get too much into it. This man. <laughs> I think I said it to you. You are sitting beside me. I just leave him. He's doing his final service. As he's going, he will never step on this hotel again. That's how some people to do. She can't do it. Remember? Ah, Oda. They won't say anything. Ah, sir, take away that. It's on Lilo. Lilo, what? Eh, busi no Lilo. Last supper, yes. Some of you don't know the reason why I, I am a wife. When we, are, we don't, we don't eat in members' house. We don't do it. And you won't see us go for an occasion. They say, oh yeah, sir, this is your takeaway. And you now collect it. Give you power debe. Baba chi yo. Kumi mpa jeo. Say self-discipline. If you can't tell yourself no. When it is sweet. And that sweet is hurting you. You are not ready for the top. That was where Samson missed it. He was so anointed, so powerful, but he couldn't discipline himself. You should learn to know what will hurt you. That, ah, kini, timba make it. Uma, ah, it will destroy my image. Let me, no, no, no. I, I, this is not a place where I need to be angry. I should not be angry here. Learn to say no. And some of you don't know that as leaders, if you get angry in public, you have just shown your size. Without self-discipline, oh, sorry, let's before that, self-discipline is enforcing yourself to comply. I will stop here for now. There's no time. What self-discipline? Enforcing yourself to comply. Jackie <laughs> cannot have the reason why some of you cannot have wealthy people as friends is because you put your needs before wealthy people too soon me i discovered 20 years ago i was listening to dr ayo arulu on 10 cds not cd cassettes cd was in by but it come on 20 years ago i bought 10 cassettes on the millionaire's capsules he said the number one law of a millionaire is that they do not want a liability around themselves. He said, if you have a, a rich friend, the day you beg him for money, that day your relationship ends. But you have that mindset. For self-discipline. Let's close. Be on your feet. Are you blessed?
Let's be honest. Have you learned something today? Are you sure? And what is that I, I want you to learn? Self-discipline. And what is self-discipline? Enforcing yourself to comply. Your body doesn't want to. You say, no, I will drag you. Let's begin to thank the Lord for what you have had. Say, Lord, give me grace, O oh God, to be able to put myself under control in order to fulfill your purpose for my life. Begin to pray. Grace, O oh God, to be able to put myself under control in order to fulfill your purpose for my life. Begin to ask for grace right now. I receive grace, O oh God, to put myself under control in order to fulfill your purpose for my life. Begin to pray. That's the only prayer we are praying this morning. Begin to pray. I receive grace, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank all the glory in Jesus' name. I decree, may you not fall like Samson. Every trap that the wicked is, has, has set for you, or that they are setting, I declare you escape those traps in Jesus' name. In whatever way you are falling, may the Lord restore you back to power. May you be able to fulfill your divine purpose. As you make up your mind that you will control yourself from today, I declare in the name of Jesus, labor satire, receive grace for it. So it is. In Jesus' name I pray. Now, how many of you will not be in the next service? So I can anoint you and release you. Please come forward. Let's receive the anointing service for the month. Only those that will not be in the next service. Shagada basking the Do you have anybody coming for the first time? Please come forward. Come forward. Is this your first time of coming? It's like I'm seeing you for the first time. Okay. We are going to a level by three. There is covenant day of liberation at a level today. There's buses will start moving from two o'clock here. Start them. You know, prayer and fasting ended on Friday. So all gospel members are coming to 11. Everybody will be there. You'll be there. So by two o'clock, bus will start moving. Sister, will you be coming? You are not sure. Be sure, receive strength. Please, after the service, uh, Emma and Susanna, you are my evangelist. See her. Make sure she attends. It's a program that God will do wonders. You know, we are going to be praying at the we'll take you to and fro. The boss will take you. That's our, our, our possibility ground. That's our campground. As you come, the Lord will honor. Sir Paulina, are you coming? Aha. Uh -huh. Brother Joseph, are you going to work? Okay. Brother Yin Are you also going to work today? Uh -huh. So we are going to a level together. You are the one playing the keyboard for the service. It's just three hours. You are. Ah, you have to disengage that engagement too. We'll talk after. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless the oil in Jesus' name. You have told us that the month of October is the month of good news. As I anoint these people today, let events that will make them share good news begin to happen in their lives in Jesus' name. Father, the events that will make them to receive good news, let it begin to happen as well in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the devil of bad report in the name of Jesus. I ask that the hand of God's grace rest upon you as I anoint you today. So it is. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. We are anointed for good news in the name of Jesus. 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 It is well with you. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. After the count of three. One, two, and let's go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. Our confession, I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. 
I shall not die. I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. 2023, marvelous help is available for me. 2023, marvelous help is available for me. 2023, let me hear you. Marvelous help is available for me. October 2023, my month of good news. God bless you. The second service starts.